Hi, my name's George McVeigh. Some people know me as Gator, but I'm not about that life anymore. The project that I've created is a Raspberry Pi emulation station. What you need is a Raspberry Pi, you need an HDMI cable, a power supply cord, an ethernet cord so you can transfer ROMs onto it, and your choice of controller. I like an Xbox 360 controller. I'm going to show you how to uh, or where I got the information and the files that I needed to be able to complete this task. The first thing that you need to do is you need to go to blog.petrock.com to download the image file for the emulation station. You have a few choices. They have different images for the Raspberry Pi version 1s and the uh, version 2s. I used the version 1 and I used the 3.0 beta. You click it, you have the option of downloading from a torrent or you can just download from uh, the internet. After you download that file, you'll want to zip, uh, unzip it and then you will download this piece of software that is used to uh, flash the image on your SD card. And then also, this is a FileZilla client which will allow you to SSH to your Raspberry Pi so you can install more ROMs and remove ROMs as you please. I'm going to include all of the links to these pages in the description below. After you've downloaded and unzipped the image file, you want to install the Win32 Disk Imager piece of software. After you've installed that, you go and click the File button here, and then you find the location of your image file. After you've done that, you select the drive. I don't have a uh, storage device in right now, but the storage devices that are available will pop up there. Make sure that you do not accidentally rewrite a hard disk or something that is important to your computer. After you have that selected, all you do is push write, and then you wait for it to write the file and say that it's complete. The next step is that the next step you need to do is to install the ROMs of your games that you'd like to play on your emulator. And so the way that you do that is by downloading and installing the FileZilla client and then after you execute it you go to host and you type in the IP address of your Pi. The way that you can find this is by typing the ifconfig command into your command line on your Pi. 
The username by default is Pi, and the password by default is Raspberry. You do it on port 22, and you click Quick Connect. After you do that, you'll connect to your Pi, and on the left-hand side, you have all the file system of your computer. On the right-hand side, you have the file system of your Pi. You go down here to RetroPi and to ROMs, and now it has all the folders of all the emulators that exist on your Pi. I'm going to go down to S, uh, Super Nintendo SNES and I'm going to move a ROM over and then I'm going to show you that the ROM works by playing it on the Pi. And so I'm going to install Battletoads and Double Dragon. You just click it and drag it over. At the bottom you can see that it moved. A lot of these move really fast because they're very small files. So now you can, you can actually stay connected to your Pi, um, and I'm going to boot it and show you that it uh, moved over and that it will play. So the Pi is still running while I uh, installed the ROM on it, and so what you have to do is you push the start button on your controller, and you go down to quit, and then you click restart system, and it's going to reboot it, and then you'll be able to view the ROM and, and execute it. You go over to the Super Nintendo emulator, and there's Battletoads Double Dragon. You select the game that you want, and it executes. And it's definitely good to remember that if you use FileZilla to transfer ROMs to your Pi and you can't view them, it's because you have to reboot the system to be able to view them. And now I'm playing Battletoads Double Dragon on Raspberry Pi, which I haven't played in a long time so I'm not good. But that's how you do it. So I hope this video will help you to be able to uh, make your own retro game console. Um, the Pi is a great tool because it is a $35 computer um, that can be pretty easily programmed with very little uh, programming knowledge uh, to where you can uh, have a good time with friends and uh, enjoy some old games from when you were younger and growing up. Thank you.